Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the A to B podcast, your number one source for military entertainment and entrepreneurship. Today, as always, we are joined with my co-host, Barry Bull. What's up, Barry? How you doing, brother? Feeling great, man. It's uh, Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday? That's yeah. what you want to call it today. Yeah. Well, we got YRF Tony here. Oh, she, wait. Okay. Hey, we got YRF Tony right here. Um, you guys have seen him probably on TikTok, probably on YouTube, probably in, in, in all of your social media platforms. Uh, and we have him with us today. We're going to do a very good interview for you guys. So without further ado, Tony, how are you doing today, brother? Uh, I'm doing good. Doing great. It is uh, not Freaky Friday. It is Fancy Friday for me. Fancy um, Friday. Oh, so oh you got to, you got to wear the the Bravos, right? Yeah, I had to change out of my Bravos before I came here. So. Oh damn! And then man. I got to go back and put my Bravos back on because you know. Got you. Uh, uh, day's not over. Yeah, day's not over. Got you, man. So, um, we appreciate you being here with us, man. And and usually, you know, the way that we like to uh to start our conversations is give our our audience a little bit of of more feedback on the reason why you decided to come on the podcast. Besides the fact that I hound you uh, until you said yes. Uh, I just think as, it, uh, as a good opportunity for me to, um, I guess, put myself out there a little bit more and to show, you know, a different side of me because people just see the, the funny side of me yeah. all the time. They don't know, like, yeah. that I do a lot of stuff, you know, behind the scenes. So I feel like this is an opportunity for me to um, connect with my uh, audience a little bit more yeah. and let them know uh, or learn a little bit more about me. Hell yeah, man. What do you do behind the scenes? Um... You mean like hey, you're editing your videos and stuff like that? Oh, just... no, I mean just like my, my life, you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like uh, uh, I own a property in Missouri. Um, I mean the editing stuff and the collabs and uh, I guess you know I have a daughter and a lot of people like I post my daughter like on my story They're like you have a family. I'm like yeah, it's I don't really show it because yeah. I don't like to put my family on social media. Yeah, but, sure. Like you know stuff like that. A lot of people don't know things like that so that's awesome got you now let's um before we touch up on your social media and, and all the things that you have going on which i think you're doing absolutely outstanding um what let, let's start all the way back how old are you right now i am 25 years old you're 25 and you joined the marine corps when you were how, how old uh joined when i was 18 so right out of high school yes sir okay uh where are you from originally are you from i'm from kansas city missouri wow oh okay so shout out so we're no we're, shouts you? <laughs> no so you're a Kansas City fan? <laughs> no you're a shouting. City fan? Super Bowl back oh to back gosh. champions. Okay, okay, okay. So you're you are a fan. Um so how was it how was it growing up back there in, in Kansas City? Um I would say uh I have three sisters and one brother. Um mom and dad split, so you know, I was uh growing up underneath my mom's house a uh, majority of my, my life and she was the one that raised uh, all five of her kids. So I come from a, a very strong woman household because it was four women, you know, and yeah. my brother is uh, about six or seven years older than me. So he moved out. And then mm. once I hit like middle school, high school, I was the only yeah. uh, man in the house. Got so. you. Okay. And um, what what made you join the Marine Corps straight out of high school? So my sister joined the Marine Corps and uh, oh. I was like, Whoa. Yeah, she can do it. Yeah, I can do it. So, and then I told myself, How old is your sister? She, I think she's 30. Is she still 30. in? No, she only did four and got she out. Only, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so, um, so, and she's older, so she's around five years older than you then. Okay, yes. so you saw that, you saw that. Did you go, did you attend her graduation? I did in Paris Island. Uh, we drove oh, from there. Missouri. There we go, where real Marines are made. Oh, Thank okay. you very much. Uh, Not true. Yeah, where, where real Marines are made. I was a San Diego Marine. So what? Um, what? Oh yeah, that's right. Midwest, yeah, oh, yeah, so Midwest, I went to the West Coast. Got you. Okay. Um. Anyways, we we know that's where real Marines are made. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that you got the experience of going where real Marines are made. <laughs> but uh, let's um. So you joined the Marine Corps. How was your experience with the with your recruiter? Um. To be honest, um, I I feel like I I seeked him out. Like it it was kind of weird how it kind of happened. Um, I think I was just at high school one day. Then I saw the recruiter and I just like had a formal conversation. And then I was like, oh, yeah, my sister's a Marine. He's like, oh, well, why, why aren't you a Marine? And then like that kind of like sparked me. I'm like, oh. okay, so you're, you're challenging. You think I can't do it? So oh. I was like, all right. So then that's when I started going to pulley functions and, you know, um, being a part of the uh, delayed entry program. Yeah. So, How long were you part of the delayed entry program for? Uh, I think I joined the delayed entry program in 2015, like in, in October. So I was in the delayed entry program for uh, a little 
under a year. So maybe like 10 or 11 months. Okay, because you were still in high school, right? When yep. you signed the papers and all that stuff. Okay, and you were 17 or 18 when you I signed I was 17. Papers? Okay, so your mom had to give you the authorization. But it, at that time, it was like, hell yeah, sign him up, you know, because your sister had already gone through, through that experience. Yep. Okay, got you. Now... Whenever it comes to your, um, you know, timing and delayed entry program, is there any type, any type of advice, anything that you did that really helped you out? You know, were you a fruit bat? A fruit bat? Whenever you went to, a, you know, what a fruit bat is, right? I do not. Oh, uh, Barry, you want to explain what a fruit bat is? Yeah. So basically, a fruit bat is when a recruiter, you know, recruiters are very dishonest individuals, <laughs> as we all know. It's the lesser of the B billets. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, which, oh. hold on, though. Let me back Yikes. up for a second. Everybody keeps asking me why you haven't done a B billet yet. I haven't. I've been I've been dodging the hist, not dodging it on purpose, but I just have not been hist yet. Uh, and they call uh, it's the, been coming. How many years you been in? Uh, I will. It'll be eight years in August. Eight oh. years you haven't he's been. He's Neil. He's yet? the chosen one. <laughs> It's and I've been one. telling a lot of people have been telling me to go recruiter, and I've actually thought about probably volunteering this no. year. Yes, for recruiter because I mean recruiter I is not good. Why is recruiter not good? I'm gonna tell you why, man. Because you go from Marine Corps, right? Where are you stationed, Camp Pendleton? Yes, sir. Marine Corps, everything, and then before you know it, you're out there in Middle America with nothing but civilians and high school kids, and 75 percent of the population not wanting to join. You're away from the flagpole, mm -hmm. right? Whereas drill instructor, you're surrounded, immersed in Marine Corps motivation every mm -hmm. single day from the first day you step on MCRD San Diego and you walk in a squad, right. but you smell that place. Yep. It takes you and back. That is the reason. There's marching, there's cadence, there's all this, the ditties, everything. Yeah. And you He's leave not there. Me speak, guys. That's what happened. That's you, what's happening right now. You leave there like you got a, a Marine Corps injection. And all that motivation is, is there for you for the rest of your life. Okay, so now it's time for the A side to uh, say his piece. And the reason why that happens, Tony, let me tell you why, right? Is because only the top Marines that know their North, their true North, go on recruiting. And the reason for it is because think about it. You're surrounded by nothing. You are the only and the first Marine figure that middle america whatever it is that you call it sees yeah. you are the direct representation drill instructor so easy to be a turd as a drill instructor because you're you're surrounded by the flagpole the, the flagpole is right there planted in the middle of what you're doing so that's why like it's easy because you're gonna get called out very easily when you when you are in the drill field out there and as a recruiter you're out there and it's your job Nobody's reminding you constantly that you are that united states marine that the world and America needs to see. That is why recruiting is so important. But let us know, guys. I mean, let us know. You guys will let us know. And then, you know, which one should Tony do? Should he be a drill instructor? Should he be a recruiter? I think you'll be a great recruiter. Though. I think you'd be a good drill instructor. Um, and I think that obviously Albert's wrong. Okay. So I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> had to hear um, all that. Okay. Anyways, fruit bat, the definition of a yes. fruit bat. <laughs> they, just, they get on the pull-up bar. They get on the pull-up bar and they hang there. Yeah. They just like, <laughs> they can't they do can't. any pull-ups, which usually it has in the past, from what I've been told, resulted in physical altercations from the drill instructors to the recruits. Yes, and back in and back the, in the and day. the recruiters don't care. They do not back care. The they got them there. <laughs> they just got them there. And the DIs are like, let's get, okay. Now we got to actually get you to do at least one pull up. But yeah, so were you a fruit bat? Uh, I was not a fruit bat. In okay. That case. Yeah, I uh, seeked out. I didn't seek out as much knowledge as I should have to set me up for you know being more competitive in a boot camp. But okay. I was kind of just like still in high school, yeah. trying to like live i guess before i changed my life completely you know gotcha. were you a guide or a squad leader uh in the the late entry program no boot camp uh i was squad leader for about a week and then i got fired <laughs> <laughs> was it at the beginning or was it at the end because time matters it, it does was at the beginning it was at the beginning okay yeah, yeah. so they, okay got you mm -hmm. okay so you went to boot camp how was that experience for you going to uh, MCRD San Diego? Yeah, what was like? What was day one like? Black yeah. Friday. Uh, Black Friday was hell because uh, I got sick, um, and when I say sick, it was like a different type of sickness. So we got introduced to our drill instructors, and right, we're making our racks, we're, we're doing our pillows, we're hitting the pillows against our legs to make the tight pillows and everything like that. And in the middle of that, it's a, a I don't know what it's really like a virus, but it's called like VGE. 
Have you heard of that? Like the yes. double dragon stuff? People are puking. Oh, the double dragon so stuff. That's people stuff. are puking. And, pu- and, and pooping. At this, like, it's bad. It's like running water. Anyways. Um, <laughs> it is very bad. So I've had it. In the middle of us like doing that, I just started throwing up. Like and shitting yourself? And I, okay, I didn't shit myself. Wow! <laughs> but I threw up in front of everybody oh, on the on the quarter deck, and then like the drill sitter looks at me. I'm like, well, "What do you want me to do? I don't, I, I'm sick." So I run to the head, and then my my dumb ass started throwing up in the like the stand up urinal. So it's splashing back at me. And the drill sitter's right next to me and like yelling at me. He's like, bitch, use the other one. I'm like, for those of you guys that don't know, in San Diego, when you run into the head, which is enabled terminology for the bathroom, that first section are the urinals. The middle section is all the sinks and the mirrors. And then the last section, well, the next section is the toilets. And then you got the showers. So the urinals would have been first like sectioned off, whatever. Okay. But like, this was after you're sitting there on the quarter deck. And like you meet all the DIs, right? Do you remember that? Uh, I, I do. Um, He's, and, he was trying to stay alive at that I, point because we we just ran the <laughs> yeah. IST. Okay, hold on. And, let me ask you a question. Do you remember your drill instructor's names? Uh, yes. Uh, well, three of them. So I had three at first, and then I had one that came like at the very end of the cycle. Yeah, and I do not remember his name. Okay, but, but it was uh, I think Staff Sergeant Alberon. Staff Sergeant Crave and then Gunnery Sergeant Curry at the time. Okay, what company? Um, hotel company. And you know which one did you Second like battalion, the best? Let's go. Yeah. Uh, the which drill instructor did I like the best? Yeah. So Staff Sergeant Crave, I believe, was the kill hat. But um, whenever the knowledge hat was not there, he stepped up and he showed like his caring side. So like, even though wow, he, he, even though he they like, care wow. at HRD. That's hotel. what he's trying to say. That's what he's trying hotel to say. Hotel hell. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> well, I like caring side of me, like caring to teach. No, he teach. cared. <laughs> he cared. He he probably he probably called you snuggle nuts, huh? No. Whoa! Albert. <laughs> that's what you say all the time, Albert. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. I mean, you just say, Alberto. You just say. <laughs> Darn you! Okay. He's a crazy rascal. Okay, so um, is that how he talked to you guys? Uh, the drum soldier. Yeah. No, he 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 still called us out of our name. I'm not gonna lie. That he um said some outrageous shit to me my first week. Like, <laughs> like what? Some Provide out- an example. Was he white, black? Was it racist? He, what are we it talking? Was, I wouldn't. I don't. Was it homophobic? I'm gonna let. I don't want to. I don't. I said his name, so I don't even want to like put it out there. Oh, okay. Is he still in? Uh, I'm not for sure. Yeah, yeah. let's not. Let's not allegate against him. Yeah, let's not allegate against him. But 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 we know you're racist, dog. We know you're racist. But it's, 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 it's <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> but in the Marine Corps, we're all very racist, aren't we? It's just yeah, we, yeah, we're gonna make just, the most inappropriate yeah. jokes. Yeah. Like whenever swim call happens, who all gets looked at? You know what I'm saying? It, it, <laughs> it, it is just, the black guys. It's called they're called iron ducks, and iron iron ducks wow. are yellow. <laughs> okay, so well, technically, if they're iron, they wouldn't be yellow. <laughs> but be so oh, right. Albert, yeah, you're it'll terrible. Be It'll be so rude. But, you know, they're called Iron Ducks, okay? So, um, so if you guys didn't know, yes, there is a, like, what would you stereotype that black people in the Marine Corps, they, can't they swim. cannot swim and they cannot shoot. I meet the stereotype. What? What? You, you, can't, you can't swim? <laughs> I can, but not confidently. Like, it. so uh, I have, it's a backstory. Uh, okay. Whenever I was, like, eight, my cousin, okay. I was, like, four foot nine. She Don't try me. to blame it on Lil' Cuss No, 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 I'm blaming it <laughs> on Don't try to blame her. it on Lil' Cuss She pushed me in the, in the, in the five foot. I'm four nine, right? So I'm pushing me in. You had one door. inch. I go. And, I'm, try, I'm trying to jump up, and then I go upside like, down. So I'm just like losing my mind in the water. And ever since then, like I was just like, nah, fuck, fuck swimming. I don't uh, even if I'm in the. I don't even need to go near the water. What like what the fuck I need to be in the water for? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, I avoided. Like swimming. you don't even take baths. Oh, okay. I, I would. I would okay. take showers. All right, cool, cool, cool. But after that, like my first time back in the pool was boot camp. Oh damn! So, like. Whatever, ten years later, and then uh, I definitely felt swim call the first day. Like they say, push off the wall and swim the twenty five meters. I went like probably about like three feet and it just like, started swinging. Yep. So damn. Uh, and then the next day, they I did I remediated. That must have been scary. Okay, but though. when you remediated, you know, to, talking to all the people, because obviously there's got to be a lot of people mm-hmm. um, out there that are scared of the same thing that you're that you're scared yeah. of. Um, what would be your advice? Because obviously you passed. So what will be your advice to them to pass swim call? I would say um, I'm going to use one of the, the leadership uh, principles. Know yourself and seek self-improvement, right? So if you know that you cannot swim, and a lot of it is just building up the confidence yeah. to swim. 
because that's why like I never went back because I was just terrified. And drowning is actually like one of my biggest fears. Like, mm. um, so mm. sometimes it's just facing your fears and then, you know, just being in the water more will help you build up that confidence. So once you get thrown in the water, you're like, you're not like, oh, I'm panicking. I don't, I don't know yeah, what to do. Cause once yeah, yeah. what the drill says, we did, they would splash water in my face after like I was learning. Yeah, it was yeah. fucked up. Um, <laughs> they were, I was, I was learning. They taught you how to like, you know, uh, they taught you different techniques to use in the, in the water. Yeah, mm. and to test to basically see if it was just like you were being scared of the water, they would splash water on your face, and if you start to panic, that's how they would know he's just not comfortable. He needs to get more time in the water, and then get more comfortable being in the water. Because in the water, you're gonna get water in your face. You know, it's okay. it's unavoidable. It's one of those things that you just it's gonna happen. So just gotcha. being comfortable with that, I feel like that will help a lot more uh, Marines pass and get over the fear of like swim qual. Well, and the other piece too is every, for those of you who are out there, you're considering joining the Marine Corps specifically. I don't know how any of the other branches does, if they even do swim qualification or how it works, but every instructor in the pool is a Marine Corps drill instructor and they are very, very experienced and skilled. They yeah. are rescue swimmers yeah. and they are never, never going to take their eyes off of you. It's not like one to one. There are many, many, many instructors in there they do not let recruits drown not even close um and when they do have to take recruits to the side they do a really good job of pulling you to the side yeah. and they're not screaming at you they're not being yeah. weird they're like okay you know that's not your drill instructor first of yeah. all mm -hmm. your drill instructors that you know run your platoon they're not even they may be in the in around the pool area but they're not in there screaming at you yeah. I'm giving you instruction. Yeah. That's the swim instructor. So they're going to work with you until you get it. Now, not all recruits get it, and you know, but I'm glad that you did. Yeah. Um, so, was what was your biggest fear during boot camp? So what, cool. Was it the swim call? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> the entire time, like my my recruiter was telling me about boot camp. I was like, you didn't okay, hear the anything. Hikes, the high, I, the only the only thing I really cared about was swim call because I knew that I had a fear, and I even tried to get with other like police that that were good in the water. But we just never like found the time because people yeah, are right. from all over the city. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like trying to find that time to link up and uh, try to do swim call was just kind of hard, or like yeah. just swimming in general. Yeah. Now, yeah, were you married? Did you have kids before you joined the Marine Corps? Nope. So after you became a Marine, you got married. Let's not talk about that. Okay, we're not. Gonna, okay, <laughs> we're gonna skip that. But it you was, got, but you got kids. Yes, I have a daughter. What would you say to to uh, what do you think about marriage in the military? Should Marines be getting married? When should they get married? But when do you get married? Like, like I'm not, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about like I was a lance corporal. I was a PFC. I was a corporal. I was a sergeant. You were a sergeant. Okay. okay. How many years had you been in? Um, uh, I think five or six. Okay. okay. What do you remember. tell? What do, What's advice that you give to your Marines when they want to get married? How long have you known this person? How long have y'all lived together? Have y'all lived together? Um, do you know how this person was raised? Um, because that's a really big part that I didn't really like mm. look into until I, uh, um, you know, yeah, you settled went through down your, and, yeah, yeah. and you know did everything like that. But that those are really important things and key things that I think are um, important in relationships. Caring about the other person's love languages and you know. Do you tell them wait? You need to wait before you go over go through a deployment. I, I actually it's funny because I have a friend that's getting married. He's in the Air Force though, and uh, I told him he's going on deployment. I was like, you 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 should wait. You should wait to see wait. how she or Takes he the handles the deployment. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Because time apart can yeah, you know yeah, deteriorate relationships and bonds. Hundred like, percent. Well, so. what do we say? Who's back here taking care of your your better half, Jody? Right. Yeah. Jody's, I mean, that's what, and you're laughing though, right? Who's, yeah, but it's, who's, who's it's, Jody? Uh, Jody is, um, I guess, the persona that the military has, has put out there for the person that takes care of your spouse while you are away. Takes more, care of, more or less. The, Jody takes care of the spouse how? <sighs> they're how they're having, care? they're having sex with your spouse. Okay. Oh my God, yes. no way. And if you're a Marine out there, if you're in the military and you're single, you live in the barracks and your girlfriend lives in base housing, that's not your girlfriend. Yep. Okay. Now, how did your life change after relationship, having kids? What was that like? Um, after I, after my daughter was born, um, you, you just, it's kind of like a, an awakening. You know, you, you're watching this human being from 
birth, grow. Mm -hmm. And then you start to realize like everything that I do that you know affects me money wise, financial wise, it affects them. Mm -hmm. I have somebody's childhood in my hands. You know, I have somebody's life in my hands. And um, I would say for people that I guess came from a background to where, you know, maybe they weren't as spoiled or had as many opportunities growing up, you try to provide that and, and give them just a better, you know, experience for childhood, you know, because some people had to step up and be in a more responsible situation because, you know, dad isn't in the in the picture or mom isn't in the picture or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be, you mm -hmm. know, mom and dad both left and then you got to be, you know, the, the one that calls the shots for the family, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Now, tough okay. Question. Let's go back to ethnicity. You're black. Not Thank you I for think, stating the obvious. I think, okay. I think what, 13 to 14% of the Marine Corps is African American? Something like that. I can't, I don't know the stats. Can't what are your views on the military race? Would you advise your kids to join? Did your parents tell you not to? Hey, this is, I've heard this. You know, we don't talk about it. It's like the elephant in the room. The military is not a place for a black man. Right? Have you ever heard that? Um, honestly, I I did not. I have not heard that. But I uh, only thing I really ha heard was just like uh, sometimes um, one thing that really stuck out throughout my career was the word eccentric because I used to have my hair longer and our hair is a little bit different. Like Rick know? James? Uh, not Rick James. I, no, not like Rick James. Okay. I, I would have been definitely out of rags. But <laughs> it was a little bit long. It had like a little afro with like curls and. You know, my hair would kind of protrude out of my cover, so. You had a little activator. A little, little bit, just just a okay. little bit, not too much. Okay. But um, a lot of the time I would get like, staff and seals are like, what's, what's wrong with your hair? I'm like, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with staff and It's, you know, how it's supposed to be, uh, zero to three fade, um, no longer than three inches whenever fully extended from the scalp, two inches in bulk. Well, it's eccentric, Marine, you need to go fix that. Is it just because your personal preference or is it like, is it you because know. I'm black and my hair is different? Is that how it made you feel? Uh, slightly. Um, but even like you get, you hear it from African American Marines as well. And sometimes I don't really know how to. Um, but whenever you hear it from, whenever I've heard it from them, uh, they basically say, you know, you gotta, you know, not conform, but you know what they see as professional in, you know. Because if you, if you Google unprofessional haircuts, uh, I've done it before, and there's like black hair or black people with like longer hair, curly hair, and that is like classified as unprofessional on yeah. Google. So and wow. then you look at professional haircuts, and then it's like low fade. So you, you know. just eventually just cut it short. Yep. And I was just like, after my daughter was born, um, I was just like, you know, new beginnings. Yeah. So, what would you yeah. say to, you know, people out there, like you said, they haven't joined, maybe they're a minority, they're black. What would you say to them? Is it a good, is, is joining the military a good choice? Uh, joining the military was the best idea. Uh, the best thing that ever happened to me, honestly, because without joining the military, I wouldn't be where I am today. Damn. What, what would you, um, what would have been your, because obviously you joined whenever you were in high school, but did you ever consider anything else? I, I've tried to go back and think like what would I be doing if I didn't do nothing nothing comes nothing to mind nothing good yeah. yeah like I would have maybe went to college but I was never um, a, a school type of guy I never mm. really like I just found it kind of like boring going in having a lecture they teach you something and then if you don't got time with the professor to actually like you know step aside and be like hey well I don't really understand this oh I don't I don't really care I, I gave you the, the PowerPoint the lecture you have the lessons online you don't need to talk to me you have you know this to teach you um so i feel like i would have probably been in college for a little bit maybe dropped out um i would not have been doing uh content creation maybe mm. um but like like i said i can't even fathom what my life would be like without the military okay now you're an o1 correct you're an administrator yes. wow um, okay so you're an, an administrator now you've been in eight eight years because i i feel that this is a this is like you're a good guest to have and ask this type of questions because obviously the military has been everything that you've known. I relate to that completely because I joined straight out of high school as well. And I go back to it and I think about it. It's like, what would I be doing? I would have gone to college. I would have dropped out in my first year of college. Like I love women and, 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 and weed too much for me to re be able to retain. And you've changed that since. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because as, Valerie, we're sorry. As, as, so soon, sorry. as soon as he's soon. honest and we love him. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, you know, and 
I think that's one of the things that keep people in the military for so long. It's because they get familiarized with the military and that's all they know throughout their entire life. And they don't even, they're so grateful with the military and the opportunities that the military has afforded them that they don't dare to look It's like, oh man, what if I maybe get out after eight or after 12 and then mm. I keep doing this. But by that time, what happens? Oh you're at, you're at 12 years. You're you might as well finish it out. You got eight more. You might as well retire. Thank you. Thank you. So has that crossed your 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 mind? It's it's been said so many times because uh my my contract will take me to 11 years. Um and then people are like, "You're at 11, man. You might as well just do that shit yeah. on." And I'm just like, I don't I don't really know. Like I've been blessed to have great staff and CEOs and a great career. Um because I hear a lot of people that, you know, Hold have, on. You said you great staff and CEOs cuz cuz first of all, you are have already crossed a huge barrier. For the last 32 plus years, 75% of first term Marines have gotten out. Mm -hmm. So you already crossed the barrier by being one of those 25%. What kept you in? Because everyone says leadership's toxic. Um, so it was a little bit of the leadership, the title, United States Marine, and really, uh, I guess, like comfort comfortability. Because whenever I was supposed to get out, it was around 2020 and COVID just hit. Yeah. Um, and that's the only reason why I was able to actually re-enlist. Because my first time I, I uh, applied for re-enlistment, I got denied. Um, really? I was a tier two Marine. And the only thing that held me back from being tier two was because in the schoolhouse, I cheated on the test. So they looked at my 6105. Tony. Page 11. I, they say if you're not cheating, you're not trying. So I was just, okay. and the funny thing is. But we the, say Marines don't lie, cheat, or steal. And I'm being honest. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> and so it was like, and the funny thing is, like, I cheated, like, on the last test. And I got caught. And then they failed me. And it put me at an 80 point, like, 1%. They wanted me to, if I would have had 79%, I yeah. would have failed. And I would have sure. had to remediate administration Man. school. Who, who knows what my, you know, career path would be. At Camp Johnson. Yeah. Yep. So North Carolina, North Carolina, uh, right outside the gate. What's there? Uh, Toby's, Toby's, Hooligans, <laughs> Raven okay. Nights. Anyways, you know. continue. <laughs> um, I kind of went on a tangent. What was I? <laughs> <laughs> he went back you to distract the, him. He went back to distract him. He went back to Toby's for a minute. The, yeah, he went, he went back bit. to spending all his paycheck. <laughs> yeah, he went back to looking for a wife at Toby's. Don't do that, guys. Don't, don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> okay, don't. so no, but you essentially, you were talking about how your career path, you know, how uh, you get told like, well, I'm already at 11. Yeah. Uh, you know, might as well finish it out. Yeah, he's re-enlisting. But yeah, so I was, whenever I uh, applied for re-enlistment, um, I was tier two. Um, and then I kind of got like the basic non-standard paragraph. There are too many, both spaces already got filled. And then I was just like, hey, you did not be in a both space, da da da, da. You can uh, submit for, um, I forgot what it was called. But basically like. QRP. For, yes. Quality re-enlistment program. Yes. And then they were like, you can lap move or you can get out. So yeah. at the time I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I started thinking about like, if I get out, what am I going to do? I'm yeah. like, I'm going to go back home, live with my mom. Like, I didn't have any savings. I didn't have, I wasn't financially, you know, responsible. Yeah. And so uh, with COVID, they let first term Marines extend across the FY, the fiscal year. Um, and that doesn't really happen. So when I extend it across the FY. That rarely happens. There's got to be a damn good reason. Well, like, COVID, I think, was a damn good reason. COVID was a good one, <laughs> but yeah. Well, but for, to his point, for O1s, a lot of people don't know, man. O1s is one of the most competitive MOSs out there. And I have seen some amazing Marines get told no. Yeah. I've seen amazing Marines be tier two. You know, because you're kind of, you're like splitting hairs. You know, yeah. everybody can't be tier one yeah. and stuff like that. So... Yeah, so with that happening, uh, the next fiscal year came. I submitted for re-enlistment, and uh, it was a waiting game. I actually have the video on my phone of whenever I got approved for re-enlistment. So in my section, we were doing Secret Santa. And funny mm -hmm. thing, the career planner got <laughs> me. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, in your section, you're doing Secret Santa? In the S1, we did Secret Santa. This is why we can't get our paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> This is why. No, 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 no. See, but the Secret Santa pick, it takes like 10 minutes. So, yeah. you know. Um, but with that, she, the career planner was uh, my Secret Santa. And then, like, she, my, my re listen was taking forever. I submitted in July. It's December at this time. I'm like, Damn. Let, me, let me know. Like, am I going to get approved or not? So, she comes in with a gift. And um, she pull, I pull it out, and I'm like, it's the little red binder. I'm like, no, no, this isn't. I'm not gonna lie, I legitimately cried. 
Wow. I legitimately. Wow. It meant that much to you? Because like I just did not. I, I was so stuck on like, what am I going to do? Yeah. So I the career to... planner gives you this surprise gift, and it's your approved reenlistment. And what happened? Um, there's a video. Um, I might post it somewhere so y'all can at least see it. Yeah. Um, I like kind of like I I take it and I like go into like a little ball. Like I try to shed my tears without people looking. Uh huh. Then I open it up and then I like read it and then they're like, you just need to sign there. I was like. <laughs> Signed my reenlistment papers, and then um, I got stationed at Kansas City after that. So uh, even CLR four, CLR four, Kansas City, Missouri, Reserve I and I duty station. I know where it's at. So and that's where uh, my next uh, you know staff of seals came into play. But even before then, like I've just like leadership does play a big part in you know a, a Marine's decision on reenlisting. So they influenced me, and they took care of me do you regret yeah. your decision absolutely not of reenlisting yeah absolutely not yeah i wouldn't go back like i said i can't even fathom where my life would if you be. had to do it today would you lock it in to stay to 20 years uh that's a lot I, of air um yeah there's <laughs> a lot of air I'm, I'm not for sure um yeah. because so today's the day you only have today yes or no you're walking away or you're staying in? Am I, am I going to finish out my contract? You're yes, finishing yes. out 20 yeah. years all the way. If they would allow you to That's put a, a hard decision. If they would allow you to put in a reenlistment package for 20 years, like for where you're at right now at eight, for the next 12 years, be like, yep, we'll take you for the next 12. Would you sign it right now, yes or no? Honestly. Yeah, um, don't lie. I'm trying. It's a hard decision. I don't, I don't think I would accept it. Why? With the opportunities and the knowledge that I have now, mm -hmm. um, I feel like I would be able to transition out of the military and be fine. Okay. But Tony, I'm the career planner. Okay. Tony, what is there that we can, that the Marine Corps can give you in order for us to change your mind? Um, I mean, I would, I, what I would tell the career planner is y'all you know, gave me what I need to survive. Uh, outside of you know the military, so I feel like I mean, as far as right now, like what y'all can give me, I, I can't really. Maybe a bonus, a bonus might might keep me in, but you had to talk a lot of money, um, me personally. But yeah, I just don't feel like uh, I would I would do it. The reason the reason why you know off camera we were talking about the the force redesign and talent management and all that stuff. That's the issue that we're incurring right now. Mm. We have an active duty sergeant that you know joined the Marine Corps. Marine Corps is the best thing that uh, that has happened to him. I think it's because he's a sergeant. He still hasn't reached the rank of staff staff sergeant. Once he started getting blamed for all the shit that really goes on behind closed doors, I think that that would that would uh, 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 change a little bit. But regardless of that, guys, what he's basically saying is, and this is what's happening right now with a lot of individuals right now. You know, with a lot of our our, our essentially our NCO core, they're in the blended retirement system. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily have to do 20. They don't necessarily have to do 20. So I'm curious to know what can we do or what can the Marine Corps do in order for them to retain more people like you? Mm. That's a real question, huh? Oh, that is a real question. That is a real question. Maybe if Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, uh, Sergeant Major Reese, uh, comes into the podcast and talks about it, I think, hey, I think that would be a, I think that would be a good one. Here, here were some things that I brought up. I was asked a question recently from somebody, senior guy. Um, he's going to have a meeting with the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, and it's about, um, you know, retention. You know, <clears throat> what are some – and the, what I was asked is what are some questions you would ask the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps? And some of the things I said was, why is homesteading bad? No one, no one has ever been able to explain that to me. You could save a ton of money. We spend a lot on these summer and winter moves, um, and I just don't understand why it's an entirely a bad thing. I mean, homesteading, I, again, based on what, what was released in Talent Management 2030, homesteading, it says right there, specific, in a par specific paragraph, is that homesteading will no longer be looked at something negative towards the Marine career progression. Well, But it's still being looked at because it's still being looked at as something bad because... Because of the monitors. Because, because if you don't accept orders, 
you are getting kicked out of the Marine Corps. Your mom, you know everybody saying? knows, and this is part of my issue with the monitors, everybody knows that every monitor, they're on their own little island. Okay, They basically do what they want. Nobody's checking them. Nobody's checking them. When do the monitors get checked? When there's a problem. And someone's some kind of complaint to a very high level, whatever. Um, some of the other ones, why for Pen Camp Pendleton uh, related, why don't we pour more money? Quality of life. That's a big deal to service members. It is. Okay. Why don't we pour more money into Camp Las Polgas, where 11th Marines is? Why don't we pour more money into Horno and Mateo, right? Okay. And Talega. I know we've that's a big one. Talega. Talega. Talega's I know we've stuck back in the fucking forties. That's serious. Yeah, that's and Talega's and stuck and in the 40s. you know why don't we pour more money into that stuff, right? Um, is is anyone really managing the monitors? Um, and then as we've talked about before, pay according to billet, education, etc. Close the pay gap between officers and enlisted. But what about if you're a sergeant and you're operating as an admin chief for six months to a year and the sergeant over here, he just get he or she gets paid the same and you're over here hitting home runs, crushing it for your unit, for this, for that. I think we need to compensate people. And you have a bachelor's degree, let's say. Mm -hmm. We need to compensate people appropriately. So money, quality of life, right? Taking the family into consideration. Things family, of that nature. Fa family, I, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, all that stuff. But I think as long as Marines get their family taken care of, if they got family, uh, it's just that it, it's just very unique. And I know that the DOD, not yeah. this is not a, a Marine Corps problem. I think this is a DOD uh -huh. problem. They're trying to... Um, they're trying to generalize when in reality you can't really generalize. That's you true. Know? You know, like you can't generalize. Oh, the the issue, in order for us to fix this issue, we need to give this and then they'll be happier because that might apply for the single Marines because of the quality of life. But how does that affect the the single sergeant with a dependent? It doesn't yeah. because he still, he still is not going to be able to afford to be able to do the nice things that you will want to do, you know, for having that higher billet. Yeah. What does the Marine Corps currently pay you as an active duty sergeant? Um, so I would say I get paid 6,800 a month, close to, close to 80,000 a year. So that's what goes in your pocket. Um, yes. And then I, I, I'm renting a home, I own property and then utilities and everything like that. That's that right. does not include what you just mentioned, though. Yes, but yeah, just my base okay. pay and what I make yearly. What's your What's your um, living situation? I know you said that you're a single father. Do you live off base? You live on base. I live off base. Okay. Um, Apartment house. I, I I am renting a house out in Temecula, yeah. so I commute about an hour every morning. Um, and the reason why I chose Temecula is because the closer areas like Oceanside, San Diego, um, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, and then mm -hmm. the reason why I didn't reside on base was because uh, my girlfriend, the, my daughter's mom, uh, is going to be residing with me as well. But if we aren't married in base housing, they cannot reside with you. So that's the reason why I also chose off base versus on base. Oh yeah, that's right. Because she doesn't how the hell she's gonna get on base too. She yeah. doesn't have her ID or none of that stuff. Yeah, I think that would be the biggest issue. Because I mean, the, the the base housing police ain't that ain't that serious. You know what I'm saying? Like you can have somebody living in there with you, but the problem is that they're not gonna be able to live base unless mm -hmm. they're with you. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest issue. You know, so mm -hmm. off base would definitely uh, make sense. Not only that, in Temecula specifically, the education system is really well. It is. Mm -hmm. You it's know, really the great. yeah, the education system is really well. Like Temecula has yeah. some of the top schools for Riverside County. Do you feel like you get paid? enough um i feel like sometimes it's personal decision that can put you in the the predicament where you don't think you're being paid enough so uh if you are taking out if you like bought a brand new car and you have loans and you have debt and then you got your home on top of that that's kind of your you put yourself in that situation mm. so if you don't have enough money i think it's personal decisions Decision making that puts you in that situation. Uh, I think uh, that I do make enough for all the expenses and debt that I have as well. So I, I think it's enough mm. for the most part. I think I think it's I think the military. I think the military doesn't get paid enough for the job that they do. But whenever you come across, you know, you take an average twenty-five-year-old man 
uh, in the United States, then that's what averages out. And but the thing is, they'll be like, the military says, oh well, you know, uh, we're paying them enough. Look at the average twenty-five year old. Yeah, but the average twenty-five year old flipping burgers in fucking McDonald's or in Wendy's is not having to do not nearly a quarter of a fraction of the amount of responsibilities that the 25-year-old sergeant is in the actual military. That's yeah, what, I, I see I what think, you're I saying. Think that's, I think, yeah, I, I agree with you. You yeah. get it's like you get you get compensated um pretty good just not for what you're doing. Exactly. Right? It's exactly. like when you're compared to like the medium, the median, excuse me, median income. How old did you say you were? 25. Yeah, $80,000 a year that there's it's not. It's actually more, believe it or not. Yeah, well, there's not, there's, there's really not 25 year olds out there making that. If you're making six figures or more as a man, you're already in the top 10%. Yeah, but it's actually more than that. Cause remember, they don't count, they don't count the dental benefits, they don't count your SGLI. Yeah. Um, they don't count your medical. Medical is huge. Yeah. Medical when is I, huge. That, that when I was getting out and I, w I didn't know if I was going to get 100%, I was freaking out because I was looking at some quotes, dude. It was like 800 something dollars a month. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you got to think about, you know, if in reality, if we add like an extra thousand just to round up, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that you need to be making. So it in is. reality, it is like the 25 year old, even though it's $80,000. Um, it's really like they're making like 110, you know, yeah. like 100 to 110. I just year. want to put it in perspective because I know pay is a big issue. And I liked what I like how you said it, Albert. Like, you know, I think I think there's the pay is good. It's just not enough for people who are going through the rigors of military life. Yeah. You're moving, you're uprooting your family, yeah. you're deploying, one, yeah, you're putting me, your yeah. life in danger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you deployed? I have not deployed in eight years. Is there anything on the horizon for deployment? People are going to be mad at him for that one. Oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. one. Of course, he's a pogue. He's never yeah. deployed. Uh, yeah. I would love uh, Well, I would say. Have you ever had an opportunity? No. Not had any opportunities. I mean, okay. at, at my first unit, uh, Max 2 on Cherry Point, I mean, they went through um, uh, like WTI, like the weapons and the instructors training. Um, and then. then after I left Max Two, is whenever they had a deployment to uh, Lithuania, I believe. So uh, I just haven't had the opportunity yet. Um, but now I don't, I don't, I don't really want to deploy because I have a family now. So yeah. in my first, like, whenever I was single and didn't have, you know, responsibilities, you know, deployment was like, yeah, send me, I want to go. You know, yeah. what's the next exercise? But now it's kind of like, I mean, I got things to take care of. You know, back mm -hmm. in the rear, I want to see my daughter grow up and I, I see people that are away from their families on deployments and like what it what it can do to families and then just you know missing out on so much of you know family time it, it, and that's really important yeah. to a lot of people and to I be honest to, what yeah. I've seen though is you know over my my career it was a lot you know less of the deployments unless they were doing back-to-backs mm-hmm they were they were in a combat arms MOS and the op tempo was insane, right? Yeah. But putting that to the side, the deployments didn't hurt the family nearly as much as all the unhealthy habits while they were back at home. Yeah, but um, do you remember? Um, you remember this major that we brought onto the podcast? Uh, we, me, and him actually spoke about that. I don't remember if it was on camera or off, or off camera, mm -hmm. but think about it, man. Like back then, you weren't getting deployed to Lithuania. You were getting deployed to fucking. Uh, I want to get deployed to Puerto Rico. That, that would be the best deployment of your life. I would tell you. We'd that right be there now. together. <laughs> we were sure one hundred wrestling Puerto Rican iguanas. brothers. I'd be like, I'm one hundred thirteen percent Puerto Rican. Wrestling what? iguanas. What? We got to go to Puerto Rico, and I'll show you how to wrestle an iguana. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but to finish his train of thought and do the do a part two. Um, so essentially, what the 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 one thing that we also have to understand whenever it comes to uh, I just completely lost my fucking train of thought, Barry, because of the Puerto Rican comment. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! You know, oh, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, okay. let's wrap it. Yeah, let's. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you guys like, follow, and subscribe. All of us and all of the social media. Tony, where can people reach out to you at? Uh, YRF Tony on all social media platforms. YRF Tony, it's that simple. You probably follow him before you follow us, to be honest with you. At least me, okay? I don't know about Barry. Barry, where can people reach out to you at? Yeah, you guys know where to find me. Instagram, at Bull5277. Uh, TikTok, at Bull52772. I want you guys to make sure that you go on YouTube and you search and follow, subscribe to the A to B podcast. The most valuable thing that you can do is share. 
There is nothing more valuable. But every everything that you're doing to engage, whether it's a like or a comment, me and Albert, we appreciate it. And uh, that's where you guys can find me. Click the link in my bio, schedule a call. The call is free and the change is going to last you a lifetime. Let's go. To caveat of what Barry said, um, <laughs> the, the most important part is, guys, is that you guys don't have to agree with me. You guys don't have to agree with Barry. Like The reason why we do this is so that we can spark critical thinking conversations all across the United States. Okay, We want to ensure that you guys are sharing this content and are creating our goal, really, is for us to be able to, on a Friday before you know the safety brief, a mm -hmm. safety brief is not until 1500. Okay, well, we're done at 11. Sergeants, bring all the Marines. Watch a clip of our podcast. Show your Marines, like, let's have this roundtable discussion on this thing, this relevant piece of information that is affecting us. How do you feel that the Marine Corps can do better? How do you feel that we can fix the pay gap? How can we retain you guys? Guys, y'all are the ones that know the answers to that. So make sure that you guys like, follow, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the part two. Let's go. Welcome to the